Busch Stadium in St. Louis. The Dodgers on the road with the league's leading hitter, Mike Piazza. The Dodgers and Cardinals next. Baseball's great rivalries renewed here in St. Louis, the Cardinals and the Dodgers. For the Cardinals in the Central Division, only a half game behind the Houston Astros, the playoff future for them good. Same true for the Los Angeles Dodgers. They are chasing San Diego with a four-game win streak. They are but one game behind the division leaders. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne, Buck Martinez, and welcome to St. Louis on this beautiful summer night to see a red-hot Los Angeles Dodger team, Buck. Their offense is going. Their big guys are playing big. Well, Gary, all year long, the Dodgers have been near the bottom of the league in runs produced, but it's been the heart of their lineup that has really come through. They've combined for 60 home runs and 200 ribbies. They're led by the catcher, Mike Piazza, who's starting to show signs of the dog days of August. He's just getting a little tired right now. But Eric Karras, the first baseman, has picked up the slack, and he's chipped in with 25 home runs. But it's the right fielder, Raul Mondesi, who got off to a slow start with the bat. It's really starting to be more patient at the plate and provide the long ball. Bill Russell knows that if this Dodger team is going to make it down the stretch, they've got to have a good offensive production from these three. Speaking of the dog days of August for the St. Louis Cardinals, some of those summer days may have caught up with them. The offense has gone a little calm over the last two weeks. Well, it sure has, and it's not unusual for young guys like Ray Langford and Brian Jordan to be on a roller coaster here in the dog days of August. But what's happened to this ball club is they recognize they've got a deep starting rotation. They need tonight starter Alan Bennis to really step up. He's not won since July 19th, and he had a pretty good first half. But Bennis, by his own admission, says, I'm a little too tentative right now, so look for him to be more aggressive tonight early in the count. This is what Major League Baseball needs. A couple of teams who are in a race for postseason play matching up against one another. And that's what we've got for you. Lewis for the 1,790th time. These two great franchises, Dodgers and Cardinals, will go at one another here tonight. The second game of this three-game series. Dodgers opened with a win. Their fourth in a row last night. There you see the numbers they have. Tommy Lasorda, of course, now out as manager with Bill Russell taking over after Tommy's retirement, 22 and 21. Bill Russell's lineup in tonight's game. He will put the same guys in, but for the pitcher who started last night, Todd Hollinsworth will be in left, Chad Curtis in center, Piazza catching, Eric Karros at first, Mondesi will be in right, the Shields at second base, Tim Wallach a star at third, Gagne at short, and Valdez doing the pitching. Alan Bennis on the mound for the Cardinals will start against the Dodgers for the second time. This will be his 25th start of the season and start of spring training. If you'd asked Dave Duncan or Tony La Russa, hey, you'll get 10 wins from Alan Bennis, they'd have been thrilled. But right now, they're a little concerned by the hit total. 142 hits, you just over 136 innings pitched. And Alan Bennis has got a real good fastball, a good slider, and an effective changeup. But he is really a little bit too tentative right now, and he's not been able to be aggressive and get ahead early. In the Cardinal defensive scheme of things, it's Gant, Langford, and Jordan in the outfield. Gaetti and Clayton on the left side. Louis Alisea starts at second base tonight. He's got 22 errors. He was the regular second baseman early in the season. But Tony La Russa has him in the lineup tonight because of his bat. He feels it's important to get an extra bat in the lineup against a tough Ishmael Valdez. And the crowd's still coming in here. And uh, these two teams go at it for the second time in the series. 8-4 victory last night six runs in the third inning for the Dodgers they have won four of the six games these teams have played this season and four out of five here Bush Stadium we are ready to go Hollinsworth will lead it off two for five last night all these will be pitching against Venice two guys both these teams are counting on a 90 degree start here at Bush very little breeze Hollinsworth, the left fielder, takes the Bennis pitch for his strike. Alan Bennis, in his last four starts, has had a couple of losses and two no decisions. His last win is back on July 19. So he really would like to find the W column again for this team, and as Buck said, cut down on the hits per inning that he's surrendering. Okay, that has been a result of the fact that he's pitched behind so often in the last month. 
He's missed early in the count, and then he has to come in there, and because of that, the hit total has jumped on him. With 20 home runs off him, opponents have outside a third. Gaetti giving Chase Lug out. Near the tarp over there, and he may have hurt himself sliding in. That's a dangerous play. And he put that knee into and somewhat under the rolled up tarp. Well, I think he got a strawberry sliding onto the warning track. The one thing you get from Gary Gaetti is everything he's got. It actually hit his glove. And then he slams into the rolled up tarp over against the wall. Frustrated by the fact he didn't make a catch because he actually got to it. He will try and stick it out here. Magnazzi comes out in front of the mound to give his third baseman time to regroup. Cardinals do not need to lose that guy. We'll keep an eye on that now for the rest of the game. He may have turned that ankle when it went underneath. Again popped up at left field this time. Gant moving in and over towards the line. And Hollinsworth is retired. One away for the Dodgers here in the first. Well, they need Alan Bennis to pitch late into the ball game. Todd Stottlemyre lasted just two and a third last night. They used five pitchers out of the bullpen. So Tony LaRusso would love to see Bennis go into the seventh or eighth inning here tonight. He's not done that in his last ten starts. He has a couple of complete games this year, including one complete game shutout this season. He has lost his only decision against the Dodgers this year. This is Chad Curtis, the newly acquired center fielder for the Los Angeles Dodgers, coming over from the Detroit Tigers, getting moved into the top part of that lineup. Two for four in the ball game last night. Curtis came over on July 31, the final day of the trading deadline. Joey Eschian and John Cummings went the other way to Detroit. One and two hitters have the lowest on base percentage in the National League in the Dodger lineup. They are not strong at getting on. Curtis hopefully will help that, and he does here. Chad Curtis delivers a one out single off Alan Bennis. Well, Gary, that's a direct result of falling behind the hitter again. He missed with the first two pitches, had a 2 0 count on Chad Curtis, has to throw a strike, and Curtis is sitting all over it and drills it through the left side. Dave Duncan, the pitching guru of this Cardinal Ball Club, really goes over the opponent's batters. That's Andy Bennis, who is the hottest pitcher in the National League right now after a very slow start. Dodgers will try and start it right here in the first against Allen Bennis with Chad uh, Curtis on it first. Pitchers taken for a strike by Piazza. And you take a look at the league's uh, leading uh, hitter as he continues in the battle with Eric Young and Ellis Burks and Mark Grace all up there 341 338 and 337 for those four hitters. Piazza's on top right now for that 341 batting average 79 RBIs for him goes the other way to right field Jordan was very deep racing over won't get it good job by Curtis who took off realizing it was going to fall in and he ends up at third base a nice piece of base running by Curtis on the long looping single the other way by Piazza and he read it immediately and saw where Jordan was playing and recognized that he wasn't going to get to that little blooper down the right field line Piazza hits the slider off the end of the bat and flares it down the right field line. You see how he went after that flat footed. Jordan's got good speed, but he was over in the alley in right center and had a long run. Look at the base runner. He sizes up the situation and makes a good turn around second base. Dodgers threatening here, first and third with just one out. Mike Piazza, you think of with all that power, actually this year, has put out a ton of singles. And there's another one added to the list. Runners at first and third. That's his 100th single of the year for Piazza, who has a total this year of 138 hits. Eric Karros, runners at first and third. Karros, the three for five ball game last night. Bennis in trouble early. And the fastball's on the corner. Gary Darling, Jim Quick, Charlie Relaford, and Dana DeMuth are umpires. Gary Darling's got the plate. See, now that this at bat, he's jumped out ahead 0 and 2, and all of a sudden, Karras is the one that's struggling. Big chance for the Dodgers here. You like to get to a pitcher who's struggling early and make him guess and wonder. Karras is gone. Strike three called. 
I don't know if Eric Karras saw any of those pitches. It's an early start here tonight, and it's twilight. Bill Russell's not really sure about this at bat, but look at the Pagnazzi set up on the outside corner. Does a good job of receiving that fastball. Hitters were talking about it during batting practice, how difficult it was to see here tonight. Harris may have been victimized by that. He didn't react, did he? Not at all. He's kind of looked. Alan Bennis gets the strikeout, his 96th of the year. You see, you can see the shadows on the field here. There are some high clouds also, which add to the twilight color. Here's Raul Mondesi, the right fielder. And Mondesi takes the slider down and away, 1-0. There are now two down. This is where the Dodgers have struggled this season, trying to get people home who they've had on base. They're only batting 252 with runners in scoring position as a team. That is not very good. Go along with that, they incredibly have the worst on base and worst slugging percentage in the league. How the Dodgers have maintained the race with those kinds of numbers offensively, of course, goes to pitching. Well, it sure does. Bill Russell knows that you've got to do a better job of taking advantage of your scoring opportunities when you're playing these first division ball clubs. You're not going to get that many chances against a good pitching staff. They have really been bad in cashing in their scoring opportunities. Raul Mondesi is one of those they count on, of course, to come up with big hits. He's 291 with runners in scoring position. Not a bad number. The breaking ball misses outside. Mondesi taking that one away. He will sometimes chase. In his career, he's been noted for that. Yeah, he's a real free swinger. And one thing Reggie Smith is trying to get him to do is recognize that if he is patient and hits strikes, he's going to be a much more productive hitter. First and third, two down, two one delivery in the dirt. Great stop. Magnazzi made that look easy. That was not an easy play. That ball was zipping along, and he just kind of picked it. Oh, he sure did, and he might be pretty lucky because that ball hit the plate and it could have skidded underneath his glove. Got to really think about blocking that ball, and I think he got surprised by the fact that it hit in front of home plate. And it jumped right up into the glove for him. 3-1 the count on Mondesi. Curtis off third. The odds at first. Dennis bounces another one and walks even. The bases are loaded. Good job by Mondesi. That's only the 23rd walk that he has picked up this season to go along with 90 strikeouts. Well, they know that Mondesi is a very tough out. They throw him a slider in the dirt with a 3-1 count, so they load the bases, and now they'll work to the number six hitter. There is Curtis, who got the single at third. Piazza, who picked up a single, is on at second base now, and Mondesi with a walk over at first. And Delino DeShields will have the opportunity. There are two down. Looking for that big Major League two-out hit right here. DeShields much better with runners in scoring position than his overall average. It's 276 when he's had a chance to bring somebody home. Usually it's the other way around. Your average is usually lower with guys on base. One career grand slam. He's got the sacks full here. Alan Bennis with a fastball down low, and he can't find the strike zone, and he's in trouble now. He's got a 2-0 count on the Shields. The Cardinals walked in two runners in the sixth run, three inning, third inning last night here. Tony LaRusso would hate to see a repeat of that here tonight. Not the way Bennis wants to start. Here's the 2-0 delivery. Fastball is taken for a strike by the Shields. Shields was going to make him work that time. Five home runs, 36 RBIs for the second baseman of the Dodgers. Shields 0 for 4 this season off Venice and his chances against him. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Takes the pitch, strike. Alan Venice comes back to even it up. Big early at bat in these kind of games. 2-2. Venice with a fastball. Grounded up the middle. Over to get it. Royce Clayton makes the running throw and gets the out. Good play by Clayton. A couple of singles and a walk. The Dodgers leave three on with the Cardinals coming up. Scoring opportunity. Take a look at the Cardinals numbers. April and May, a rough start. But since then, the best in the majors with that 39 and 27 mark for Tony LaRusso right there, number 10. 
And the lineup for LaRusso's Cardinals tonight looks like this. Clayton will be leading it off. Ray Langford, followed by the big guys, Gant, Jordan, Mabry, and Gaetti, all with power. Bagnozzi doing the catching. Alise is at second base. And Alan Venice on the mound. Ismail Valdez goes to the mound for Bill Russell's Dodgers. This will be his 25th start of the season. He's 11 and 6. The ZRA is 12th in the National League. One hit every inning. He's pitched. Look at the base on balls. Very good ratio. He's got good control, good command. 122 strikeout. That's a result of a very good curveball. Fastball, curveball, slider, and changeup. And the Cardinals were really studying the video of his last game and made a note that he threw a lot of curve balls and change-ups last time they faced him. Valdez ready to go. And Clayton, the leadoff batter, stands in. You see a lot of fastballs in all likelihood early in this game. <laughs> Clayton had a one for three in the opener of this series, won by the Dodgers last night. Good speed when he gets on base. He can cause pitchers all kinds of concerns. And he's ahead on the count here. Two balls and no strikes. Valdez saw him square to bunt, but he's just taking on the pitch, waiting for him to throw a strike. Two balls and one strike. That's the all-star break. He has had two wins, a loss, and three no decisions in his starts. Valdez has one victory this season against the Cardinals. Two and all lifetime. Popped up. Then fielders are going to have to help one another, too, calling where these balls are and that will be hauled in by Karros at first. Clayton is retired. There's one away for the Dodgers defensively. They've had some struggles with it defensively. Hollinsworth the rookie out there in left. Chad Curtis in center. Raul Mondesi in right. Wallach, Gagne, DeShields and Karros. Jim Wallach was picked up after the Angels released him and they've got a veteran third baseman. Remember Mike Blowers has been lost for the season with a torn ACL ligament and Wallach has already made a dramatic contribution not only with the glove but he's already dri driven in eight runs for the Dodgers hit a grand slam on Sunday to win that ball game. What a return. Even if the other guys were also coming around while you were returning it still looks nice <laughs> to have it done when you're coming back. Ray Langford. Langford had an 0 for 3 in last night's game. He's ninth in the league in walks, seventh in stolen bases. Top of the order of the Cardinals typically has good speed and usually pretty good on base percentages. Real good changeup right there for the 22 year old right hander who will turn 23 this month. One ball, one strike on Langford. Good slugging numbers for a guy who hits up there in the top of the order at times. Tony LaRusse has juggled this lineup a lot this season, especially in that number one spot. Tip down to third. Right underneath the glove of Wallach. It'll be a fair ball coming over to get it. Hollinsworth and down to second base goes Langford. And he's on with a double on a real roller down that third baseline. I hit it right off the end of the bat. It was a curve ball, and he looked like he hit it off the end and put a lot of spin on it. Everybody is expecting Langford to really drive the ball. Wallach is off the line at third. He hit it right off the end of the bat put some spin on it and stays down and goes under the glove of Tim Wallach. Todd Hollinsworth was way over in left center and had a long run and Lankford has a one out double. 27 doubles on the season now for Ray Lankford. The Cardinals sixth in the league in two baggers. Those are the guys with speed. And an RBI chance here for Ron Gant. He's been in a bit of a tailspin but having a tremendous season for this team. 22 home runs, 62 RBIs. Go along with that batting average. They count on him for RBIs. Two for his last 16 at the plate. Valdez misses up high with that. He's behind here. Two balls and no strikes. Well, he's real zeroed in right now on a fastball. Valdez has fallen behind, so you can bet that Ronnie Gann is sitting on fastball down around the knees, out over the plate a bit. Throw at second base to Shields in back of the bag, did not move in on it, causing some concern for Valdez as he turned around. See, that's where he's playing here. The Shields is right, almost right behind the bag at second base. 
not moving very far the other way figuring Gant is going to pull the ball. Fouls it off the other way. Two balls and two strikes. Two and one sorry. Two and one on Gant. Brownie Gant's one of those guys in the middle of the order. He's got the veteran experience. He's been in these situations down the pennant stretch before. And he's hitting better against right-handers because he's got good coverage on the outer half of the plate. He can get to those breaking balls, and if you make a mistake and leave it out over the outer half of the plate, he'll wear it out. Breaking ball way up high that time, and three balls and one strike. Valdez did not get that one where he wanted it. Runner at second base, Gant ahead on the count. And a big cleanup batter, Jordan waiting on deck. The RBI producers in this lineup, Gant, Jordan, Mabry, Gaetti. Four pretty good ones in the middle right now. Here's the 3-1 delivery to Gant, off-speed pitch, and he catches the outside corner. He was not going to give in. I threw him a slider, and it looked like he took something off of it. So Gant fooled on the pitch, wisely took it. Now he's got to regroup a bit. Short enough to try to put it in play. 3-2 count off second Langford with good speed. Being held by the shield. Fouls that one straight back. He'll do 3-2 again. Hey, when they talk about Valdez, boy, they all rave about his stuff. Great arm, good breaking pitches. Has good control, as we pointed out. That's Joey Amalfitano. He's seen a lot of good pitchers over the years. He knows that this Dodger team, although they've got a lot of young starters in their rotation, has got some real first-class arms. 13 and 11 last season. Valdez again to Gant. He missed with that one. So the walk will put two on. Runners on at first and second base with only one away. It's one of the rare walks he will give up. 35th of the year in 162 innings. That could create some problems now in the middle of the order. Here's Brian Jordan. Jordan just having a tremendous season for the St. Louis Cardinals. Leading the club, doubles, RBIs with 80. Needing one more to match his career high in RBIs, and he's got a chance right here. Gary, you know Brian Jordan's a real interesting guy. He says right now he's hitting 299. I'm doing pretty good, but look at the numbers when he's got runners on base. Runners in scoring position, he leads the National League in these situations. He's had that lead most of the year. Oh, there's a struggling, and Piazza's going to go out. He's not only missing the strike zone, he's missing it by a lot. And a 2-0 count. This ball is well out of the strike zone. See the target Piazza had set up on the outside corner, down and away, and Valdez throws it up and in. This is something that Bill Russell and his coaching staff is a little concerned about, that sometimes when Valdez gets in these situations, he doesn't know how to bail himself out. He's prone to giving up multiple run innings, and with his kind of stuff, he's just got to figure out a way how to make good pitches and do like Alan Bennis did in the top half of this inning. Throws the fastball right there, and uh, got it by him. He couldn't get around on the count. Two balls, one strike. Valdez also coming off his worst outing that he's had this season in his last start against Cincinnati. He gave up eight runs, six of them earned in just four and a third innings. So you, if you're the Dodgers, you want to see him come back with a strong start to this game to put some swagger back into his delivery. And it'll be step out time at the plate for Brian Jordan. 51 RBIs in his last 45 games for the Cardinals. 2-1 delivery to him here. Just missed inside. Maybe a little bit low as well. That's one thing Brad Jordan wanted to do in this game tonight was be more selective. So he's got only 16 walks all year long, and even though he's hit in 10 of the last 11 ball games, he's getting one hit a game, and he's really not zeroed in right now. Take the throw at second base. Very close to the bag, though, was Langford. Langford on at second, Gant on at first. Cardinals threatening as the Dodgers did in their half. And the Dodgers loaded him up and 
could not get a run in. First and second here. Three one pitch and he walked. It. Two walks in the first inning given up and the bases are loaded for the Cardinals and John Mabry. Russell's got to be wondering what's going on with his starter. This just doesn't happen to this kid. Two walks in one inning, and we talked about the fact he came into the game with just 34 in 24 starts, and he got himself in a big time jam. John Mabry with the bases loaded. And one out. Bez in the inside corner gets the strike. He has had only two games this year where he has walked more than two in his entire start time. I mean, he just doesn't walk people. And he's walked two here in this inning. Mabry, an 0 1 count, one away. Infield double play. Death Piazza had to make the block on that one, but he went around on it, and Mabry arguing about it. A check swing that he couldn't hold up on on a ball that ended up in the dirt. I'm not so sure he went around. He looked like he got it started, but then decided that that breaking ball was going to be in the dirt. Let's take a look at the hack. Yeah, he went far enough. He went after it. So he is in a hole quickly. Tried to grab that bat and bring it back, but it wouldn't come. Cardinals threatening here. to the count steps off looking at Langford at third base early jam this 22 year old right hander 0 2 count only one away swung on and missed big strikeout he gets Mabry swinging and there are two down Boy he made some good pitches to John Mabry. He started him out with a fastball and then throws a couple of curveballs. And Mabry, with two strikes, has to try to make contact and swings right over the top of that curveball. So both these pitchers facing bases loaded situations in the first inning. Alan Bennis got out of the problem he was in. Now here's Guy Eddy, veteran third baseman. Breaking ball way outside to him. Ball one. This is one of the Grand Slam kings of baseball, active wise. Nine career for him. He's tough in tough situations. 1 0, chop towards third base. Wallach's going to have to hurry this. And he didn't get him. One run scores. An infield hit for Gaetti and an RBI. Langford crosses and the Cardinals have a one nothing lead. Remember Gary Gaetti banged his knee on the tarp down the right down the left field line chasing a foul pop. He didn't show any effects at all. You know he's not the fleetest of foot but he was able to beat out that swing and bunt. Look how deep Wallach is at third. And then Gaetti taps this curve ball. He tops it down the third base line. Wallach has to wait for it right there and that little hesitation allows Gaetti to beat it out at first. Good hustle. 57 RBIs now for Gaetti. Base is still loaded, and here's Tom Pagnazzi. Pagnazzi lifts that one to right, but not deep. Raul Mondesi gets in underneath it and puts it away. But the Cardinals come away with a run, a couple of hits. Gaetti's infield single producing the Cardinal run. Lead over the Dodgers, and for those of us at ESPN, uh, the activities today and for the next few days and some time will be colored by a great loss today as a very good friend and fellow broadcaster Tom Mees one of the founders at ESPN and Sports Center back in 79 and with whom I have done hockey over the past few years uh, was lost to us today in a, a drowning accident the details of which are very sketchy at this point apparently in trying to save a neighbor's child at a pool and uh, Tom passed away today leaving behind a wife and two young children. We are deeply sorry and send along our best wishes to his family relatives and friends and those of us at ESPN have suffered a very deep loss today. The games however do go on. Tim Wallach. One nothing lead for the Cardinals after Bennis was able to work out of the Bases loaded situation in the first. Bottom third of the order for the Dodgers. Wallach, Gagne, 
and the pitcher do up here against Venice. Fastball on the corner, one and two. Venice got himself out of a bases loaded situation. Got some help from Royce Clayton in the first inning. Now Dez wasn't able to work out of a similar situation. Gave up the single cardinal run. On the infield hit to a guy he thought was hurt. Surprise, surprise. Numbers with the Angels. Tim Wallach thought he was going to be out of baseball. Fouls this one off. He has been brought back, resurrected here on a, on a Dodger team that really likes this guy. The organization does, and the players do. Well, you can't help but like him. He comes, does his job every single day, never says a word, and always has himself ready to play. Bill Russell needed a third baseman, needed another veteran in that locker room and on the field, and Wallach really fit the bill. He had started the season with the Angels, was released, then signed to a minor league contract on July 25 by the Dodgers, played at San Bernardino. He is playing with a fractured rib. He fractured it on July 31st, and the Dodgers brought him up on August 11th. So even though it's fractured, he's still playing with it. Says so it doesn't bother him that much. Now that happened, taking the throw at third base on a steal attempt. The throw was into the base runner, and he reached for it, and the runner kneed him in the ribs and fractured that rib. Get back to the major. She just keep right on going. I asked him. I said, "Were you upset?" He said, "Man, I was livid." <laughs> he saw his ticket to the Dodgers slipping away when he heard he fractured a rib, but he said it's not as bad as once earlier when he had it in his back. He's had four hits and ten at bats. This is the fourth game he's played in. One home run, eight R eight RBIs in those three games to get you in with your teammates again in a hurry especially when you're in a division chase so be the tenth pitch of this at bat as Wallach is working Alan Bennis three to the count on him and he draws the walk His pitches have been struggling let's check in on what's going on elsewhere Bill Pito all right, Gary, thanks a lot. Houston and Montreal, we pick things up in the first inning. Shane Reynolds on the hill. Two on from Moises Alou, his 17th home run of the year, and third in two nights. Right now, Montreal leads it 3-0 in the second. Gary, back to you. Alou is red hot. A couple of home runs. In yeah. before, gets another one there. That has been a hot series, of course. They had the big fence-clearing ball on Monday, and then Drabeck hit Pedro Martinez last night. Looks could kill in that series. Here's Gagne. Greg Gagne with a runner on at first base. Nobody out here in the second inning. Lou, of course, one of those players who's hoping the uh, collective bargaining agreement will be reached shortly and the time served will be credited because if it is, he's going to be a free agent next year. 0 1 delivery. Gagne takes a breaking ball down. One ball and one strike. Each team with a couple of hits. Cardinals have the early 1-0 lead. That's going to be a tough situation for Moise Salou. What do you tell your dad? Dad, I'm leaving for free agency? Yeah. <laughs> that will uh, be interesting if indeed that's what happens. The time served issue, however. Not resolved. 1-1 one, one count. Agni takes the fastball away. Two balls and one strike. You see Bennis even on this at bat, what Buck was talking about before. Fine tuning, trying to paint a little bit too much, maybe? Yeah, taking too much time. And this was something that they have been talking to him about. One of the veterans on the staff, Todd Stottlemyre, has really had several conversations with him about being more aggressive and thinking about pitching ahead. A lot of the problems are created when you fall behind. Already up to 37 pitches in this game. Here's Todd, who had, as he said, his worst outing of the season last night versus the Dodgers. Now, he summed wanted, it up by saying, I couldn't do anything. Yeah, and he won't really talk about it much, but he's got a bit of a back problem right now. And he said, no excuses last night. He just stuck up the joint. Agnew with a runner at first. 
Puts that one out right center field. Langford, the center fielder, called off by Jordan, and Jordan will put it away. Well, it goes back over to first, and there's one away. Wild card race in both leagues, a good one. Montreal has turned things around again after mostly a good season. They went into a trough a bit in July. They picked the pace up. Cardinals three and a half, and the Dodgers three and a half out of the wild card spot. The irony is in the National League, you're closer to a division title than you are to a wild card slot. For both of these clubs. Well, that squares to bunt, takes the pitch for strike in the inside corner. Looking to move the base runner, Tim Wallach, up to second base if he can here. 11 sacrifices this year. Leads the entire Dodger team. The Rocket, nicknamed after that football player who went to Notre Dame. And then to where Montreal at Toronto somewhere, Canadian Football League. Drops that one. He got him. Sacrifice, though. Valdez is the second out of the inning. Perfect bunt. Valdez put it right on the end of the bat. Really took the sting out of it. Gary mentioned that he leads the Dodgers. And he's just stretched out that lead with a perfect sacrifice back to the pitcher. Alisaia came over to cover. 1-4 in the sacrifice. Puts Wallach down at second base with two away. And Todd Hollinsworth, the left fielder, coming up. Hollinsworth garnering some attention to try and be yet another rookie of the year. And I think he's going to draw some votes. I sure will. And he's really picked up the pace at the right time. He rips that one to center field. Langford in under. We'll put it away. And that'll do it. No runs, no hits, a walk, a base runner left on. At second base, Cardinals have the one nothing lead. Sunset here in St. Louis. How about that little Rembrandt painting right there? A reminder that the fall is coming, and NFL preseason football is as well at ESPN. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. Oakland takes on Atlanta, 8 o'clock Thursday. Raiders and Jeff Hostetler will be at quarterback. Falcons have added Cornelius Bennett to help them on their defense. And who are we going to pick up with Oakland? The Rocket. We left him in Toronto. We've now moved him to Oakland. He's back from the Canadian Football League. <laughs> and has been back, actually. You'll have a chance to see him. Luis Alisea. Batting eighth in the order. And he takes the pitch. One ball, one strike. Alisea, Venice, and Clayton do up. One nothing lead. Both pitchers struggling with the strike zone early on. Two ball, one strike count here in Alisea. Alisea getting the start at second base in tonight's game. Tony LaRusso saying, I want to keep him active. LaRusso be is keeping his bench people out there and keep the blood flowing. Uh, Tony LaRusso is the master of that. Remember what he did with Tony Phillips back in Oakland. And Phillips was an infielder that played the outfield, and now Phillips is making a lot of money as an everyday player and playing in a lot of different situations. So LaRusso knows how important it is to keep all 25 men active. Breaking ball and a good one. Alisea knew it, but he couldn't do anything. He was frozen on that one. Strikeout number two. Now oh, that's that good curveball we mentioned. And now this appears to be finding the zone now. Late break and catches the inside corner and Alisea knew it. There's two walks, two strikeouts. And here is Alan Bennis. 30 pitches have been thrown by the Dodger right-hander. We've got one down here, the breaking uh, fastball, rather, swung on a miss by Bennis. As a hitter this season for Alan Bennis, 8 for 44. Three extra base hits. They've all been doubles. And the breaking ball is in for a strike. 2 count on him. That's that fastball. Just got a piece of that back into the screen here to hold the count of two strikes. About 91 miles an hour in that fastball. He's got a good one. We've already seen a good changeup he can throw to Set that slider curveball. 0 2 to Bennis reaching. He's gone. Three K's. 
Gary, good pitchers don't give you too many chances to get to him. Valdez did it in the first inning, and after that, Dave Wallace, the pitching coach, went over and had a chat with him, and they got things straightened out. He walked a couple, but actually got out of the situation with minimal damage, allowing just one cardinal run, and the pitching coach may have found something that got Valdez back in the strike zone. Valdez is in there right now. He has struck out the first two Cardinals. He's faced here in the second inning, and Royce Clayton, the leadoff batter. Come on and give him a try. Clayton third in the league in bunt hits. He has nine of those this year. He'll be up there among the leaders in total infield hits on the season with his speed. He's not had much success against Ismael Valdez. One for ten. And the breaking ball off speed curve is outside to him. One ball, one strike. Two down, one nothing Cardinal lead. Cardinals have been anxious to find somebody to step up and be a leadoff hitter. They may have found their man here in Royce Clayton, who is, appears to be very comfortable in taking more pitches, a little more selective, and there's a fun attempt. Not a good one. The answer comes back and puts it away. So Clayton is retired, and uh, the Cardinals go down one, two, three here in the second inning. When we come back, that man will take the stuff off and be hitting third this year. Woof. They did not unload nearly though as many players as everyone thought they would with the trading deadline. Now they thought they might move Todd Zeal and there's still some speculation that Zeal has gone through waivers and they'll still make that deal but everybody expected a couple more deals by the Phillies. Alan Venice ready to go back to work here. Curtis will lead it off for the Dodgers. Chad Curtis who picked up a single in his first at bat. He's gone three for five now in these two games. Dodgers with a four game win streak. Including the 8-4 victory in the opener of this series last night. And the 1-0 fastball by Bennis is on the inside corner. We could easily see after that first inning where both teams loaded them up, the pitching duel. Yeah, I think both guys recognize, wait a minute, I'm doing this again. Trying to make perfect pitches early in the count, falling behind. Dennis, who's 10 and 7, delivers the 1 1, and the fastball's up high to Curtis. Gary, I think a lot of pitchers got to pitch backwards by making 100% effort on the first pitch to hit the corner. And then they miss, and then they back off to about 90%, and then they miss again, and all of a sudden you're throwing an 80% fastball 2 and 0. Yeah. That's danger. Hit in the air to center field and deep. Langford banking up on this one. 400 straight away at the wall. Off the top of the wall. Goodbye, home run. Chad Curtis, the number two hitter, gets his first National League home run, having come over from the Detroit Tigers, where he had ten dingers. He's added one in the other league and tied this game up at one apiece. Two and one pitch. Once again, Bennis is behind in the count. Throws a fastball and stays right out over the plate. And Curtis, with the count in his favor, both times tonight has gotten fastballs and he hit them both hard. This time it goes over the glove of Ray Langford into the, the bushes in the center. And it nestled right in there, didn't it? Here's Mike Piazza. Fouls that one off. So the ball game tied up. That'll be the 21st home run surrendered by Bennis and Chad Curtis with his first in the National League and a big smile to accompany it. Bennis has given up 10 to right handers 11 to right handers now and 10 to left handers this year and Piazza takes the home run cut down 0 and 2 on the count. Chad Curtis an interesting pickup for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well they needed a center fielder. Obviously Brett Butler was lost to the team back in May and they really weren't able to come up with a replacement. Curtis gives them a guy that can range far and wide in the outfield. They thought he might be able to hit leadoff, but so far he hasn't been productive in that spot, but dropped down into the two hole, he's done all right. Doing all right tonight. Down to third, and that one will be foul. Ball and two strikes. Well, Mike Piazza still leads the league in hitting. It has not been an easy road after a very good start. Piazza has struggled at the plate for the Dodgers. You see how the numbers have declined in a very disappointing August. Well, I don't think it's a problem at all. You think about Piazza, he plays every inning of every game behind the plate, takes his foul tips and up and down all night long, and I'm amazed that he's been able to hold that 300 average all the way here until the middle of August. 
Yet another reason why the talk continues about getting him out from behind the plate and playing somewhere else sometime. Not this year, but maybe sooner than later. And Bennis has got a 2-2 count on him. That one towards right field. Elisea knocks it down. Nice play. Well, we mentioned that Louis Alisea got off to such an awful start with the glove this year. 22 airs, and tonight he chips in with a fine defensive play and takes a hit away from Mike Piazza. Alisea with two steps into the outfield, dives, gloves, and quickly gets to his feet to throw out the Dodger catcher. Two good defensive plays we've had in this game. One by both of them made against Los Angeles. One by the shortstop. One by the second baseman, Clayton and Alisea. Here's Eric Karros. He was called out on strikes his first time up. One down, a run in on the Curtis home run, tying the ball game up. Dodgers with three hits and the Cardinals two. And a 1 1 count on Eric Karros. And again down to third, short hop. Nice play by Gaetti. Two down. Gary Gaetti still has those great hands at third base. He broke a toe early in the season that caused him some lateral movement but now he's healthy again and he's always got those sure hands takes the short hop and guns it across the diamond for the second out. Venice getting some help here in this third inning after giving up the home run to Curtis leading it off. Raul Mondesi a drew a walk one of two given up by Venice takes the breaking ball down low ball one. On to see it 280 on the season now. Three for five in last night's game. And he goes after the off speed pitch. Good one by Dennis. One and one. delivery fastball Dennis misses inside with that two balls and one strike we'll talking about Curtis in center field Brett Butler's going to try and get back he's starting in a rehab process they say when the team's on the road in Montreal he may come back and join the team fouled off they figure that once he rejoins the team he'll take about 10 days and uh, may be activated if he feels like he can play well wow, wouldn't that be great I know everybody would love to have him back. You know, all of baseball would be thrilled to see him back in a Dodger uniform. No Russell, no what a shot in the arm it would be to have him back as a person and as a player. So, Brett, we're all rooting for you and get back soon. He sure is working at it. Here's the 2 2 delivery. And postseason play. It's like Ozzie with the Cardinals, Butler with the Dodgers, veterans. No, they haven't got many more times around. Two teams with a chance to go to postseason. That's a big deal. Oh, it sure is. For these guys. And it's a big deal for their teams just to have a guy like Ozzy sitting next to a Royce Clayton talking situations. Gaetti's up with this one. He makes the play. Mondesi is retired, but the Dodgers have tied this ball game up. Chad Curtis, first home run as the National Leaguer. Langford gave it all he had. But here at Bush Stadium, he just ran out of room. Cardinals and Dodgers locked in a good one at 101 as we go to the bottom of the third. We invite you to get ready for the pennant races by ordering Major League Baseball extra innings. You can see hundreds of games from other areas of the country in your home. That's Major League Baseball extra innings available now from DirecTV and Prime Star. And if your significant other won't let you do it in the home, just set it up out back and go out there for the nice chest. <laughs> Fastball taken up high. Ball one, Ray Lang. You think that happens? No. <laughs> no. I haven't seen anybody else out back when I've been out there. <laughs> I thought I was the only guy that said I'm back. <laughs> hey, we can email each other. <laughs> one ball, one strike. <laughs> Langford had a double and scored in the first inning on an RBI single by Guy Eddie Gant and Jordan to follow here. Ishmael Valdez, the off speed pitch, line drive to right, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. Mondesi thought about it, but. 
Didn't have any hang time on it. And Langford's got a leadoff single here in the third inning. Well, Langford has a couple of hits, and they've gone in opposite directions, but they've both been curveballs. This time, Ray sat back and waited on it and golfed that low curveball into right field in front of Mondesi. Seventh in the National League with the 27 steals and doesn't get caught very often. And Piazza doesn't catch many very often. And who do you blame that on? Well, we were talking about it between innings. I don't know. Well, a combination of pitcher and catcher. Mike Piazza first came up, and he really didn't throw that bad. Remember, he was a first baseman, and he's kind of a converted catcher. He's got a strong arm, but he has not had any success throwing out base runners. 13% of the major league average this year, 25% Piazza's numbers. The other thing that's troubling, and do they connect, the number of box committed by this Dodger staff, 18. Twice as many as the next club in the National League. 1-0 count on Gant. The runner at first in a 1-1 game. That may be a product of the pitchers trying to rush and not coming to a complete stop. Trying to help out Piazza. See what Tony La Russa does here. He likes to run, make things happen. Caros is holding at first base. Runner not going. Gant takes a strike in the inside corner and looks back. Home plate umpire Gary Darling. He thought he leaned away from an inside pitch. Well, again, was bailing out on that inside fastball. The last thing he expected was for that pitch to be called a strike. Take a look at this last fastball. Ew. Pretty wide play, eh? 1-1 one, one count. And waiting chases the high fastball that time. Dead heat right there. One ball, two strikes. He wasn't waiting on anything, was he? I'm swinging now. Here it comes. He's got a good fastball. Runner on at first base. Pitchers, hitters both taking lots of time here in this game. Fastball away. Gets it there. Did he go? Check it first. No. Jim Quick. Two balls, two strikes on Gant. Gant had a walk his first time up. We mentioned then he's only had two hits in his last 16 at bats. One of those did come in last night's game. And the throw to first. Back. On his knees, Ray Langford. I'm a little surprised Larissa has had Langford wait so long. He's only been caught three times all year. And he's 14 for his last 14. He's edged the lead a little more, but still not going. And Gant files the pitch back. Two balls and two strikes. But Tony Larissa generally won't wait at all. Maybe one pitch. When he's got a guy like Langford on the base pass, Cardinal manager generally. Let's it fly. Well, what he'll do is he'll give the good base runners the green light. I'm surprised by now he hasn't given the must run. Yeah. 2 2 timeout taken by Langford at first base. We've got a number of players who have tried to get something out of their eyes in this game down there in the field. Whether it's dirt or some pollen, or I'm not sure, but a number of them have had to stop. He's just trying to deke the pitcher. He'll be flying here probably. Not going. Great breaking ball. A call. Third strike. And Gant is retired, and he was really buckled up on that one. Now Valdez gets his fourth strikeout on a good curveball. It throws Gant at the plate. Starts at him. You see his knees buckle, and it breaks over the heart of the plate. Well, Des and his other start and win against the Cardinals here in St. Louis back on May 11 went seven and two thirds, two runs, four hits, and struck out six. He is two and zero lifetime against the Cardinals and an ERA of .96 against St. Louis in the 18 and two thirds innings he had worked against them coming into this game. So Valdez trying to shut it down here with Langford on it first. Jordan up. Langford's going to go. You'd think it would be here. With one away. Jordan at 299. 
Well, he's got him leaning now. Yep. He's made a couple of real good tosses to first base. Blankford had the dive back in. Watch the move. Good throw, quick tag, but he's got his hand on first. Valdez taking a long look over there. Breaking ball, misses up high, 1-0 the count. Looking to see whether or not anybody's going to be moving here. Outfield, of course, very deep on Jordan. Valdez gets him to chase the high fastball. We've seen a number of the Cardinal batters do that. 1-1. Now you see that high fastball so well that Valdez has so much velocity on it, he just pumps it by you. Very difficult to get on top of it. That borderline high strike. John Mabry, the big first baseman, waiting on deck. Langford off first base. Not going again. Just caught a piece of that, fouled it back, a ball and two strikes. George Hendrick in the bench. You know, he wasn't in Montreal the other night. He was soft tossing before the game, throwing a hitter some underhand lobs, and the hitter hits it into the screen and came right through the screen. Hendrick has done a great job with these young hitters, in particular Brian Jordan, the cleanup batter. Jordan gives Hendrick all kinds of credit. Hendrick is very reluctant to take any of them. And still the problems going on at first base here. Now the trainer is going to have to come out. Ray Langford, whatever the problem is, it's not going away. And Tony LaRusso is coming out as well. Langford has stepped off three separate occasions since pitching up, picking up the single to lead off this third inning. While they check Langford out, let's check in with Bill Pito. Bill. All right, Gary, Houston to Montreal in third inning down 3 0. Houston's Jeff Bagwell steps up, drives it the other way. That's going to score Brian Hunter. That made it 3 1. Houston down 2, and that's where we are right now in the bottom of the third. Gary, back to you. Well, thanks very much. There's the wild card situation right now with Montreal up over St. Louis and Los Angeles, Colorado, and Chicago within striking distance. And whatever is wrong with Langford, he he took a couple of jogs down the line. It's going to take him out of the game. You know, I don't know that he's got something in his eye. I think he's having trouble with his vision. He's kind of wiping at his eye as if he couldn't see well. Tony La Russa asked him after he jogged how he felt. And he goes, well, you know, I don't feel bad. And La Russa didn't like that response. He said, no, we're going to get you checked out, right? He crashed into the center field wall chasing Chad Curtis's home run. He hit the wall pretty hard, but it appeared as though he hit it with his left shoulder more than anything. But if we get an update, we'll let you know about Ray Langford. Fan favorite Willie McGee will come on to take his place. So Langford, the center fielder out. And McGee is in. 37-year-old veteran from the winning Cardinal days. On now at first base, it's a one-two count. And the delivery swung on and line just out of the reach. In the left field for a base hit by Jordan. Yagney tried, couldn't get it. Hollinsworth will get it back in, and the Cardinals have runners on at first and second base with one down. One-one ball game here in the third. Jordan waited on the breaking ball right here. Gagney has a bead on it, but it's just over his outstretched glove. Willie McGee had to hold up to make sure that ball got into left field so he could only move to second. Well, the Cardinals now have picked up four hits in the game. And here's John Mabry, who struck out his first time up two on, one away. And he takes the fastball up high, ball one. Just when we thought the pitchers might be settling in. They've gotten back in trouble again. 1-0 count. Early on in this game, but these pitchers have had to work hard already. Breaking ball tapped right back to the pitcher. Shortstop Gagne one relay to first, scooped out by Karos, and they turn a big double play. No runs, a couple of hits, one base runner left on game time.
ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball is brought to you by Denny's Hologram Baseball Cards with 3.5 seconds of actual game footage only at Denny's. Great to have you with us. And uh, who is that? Has he grown a beard? Is it the name man? <laughs> there is a resemblance there. It's the smile. Delano De Shields makes it outside for a ball. A 1-1 game. Four hits for the Cardinals, three for the Dodgers. Here in the fourth inning. De Shields. He was denied. An outstanding play by Clayton with the bases loaded in the first inning. Came up with a ground ball over the bag at second. And got him out. The Shields, Tim Wallet, and Greg Gagney will be due up here. Strike taken off Dennis. Two and one. Willie McGee stays in the game. Center field for Langford. Two one down to third off the glove. Guy Eddie will have no play on this one. An infield hit. Delano to Shields. Leads it off for the Dodgers here in the fourth. Hit like a bullet to the backhand side. The Shields gets an infield hit. He talked about Gaetti and his great hands. Even the great hands down at third can't corral this one. A one hopper to his backhand side. He goes down on one knee, gets a piece of it, but he can't make a play on it. We've been told Langford had to come out of the game with a strained right groin problem. I guess it didn't really affect his eyes much. Rubbing his eyes. No. That's a related, I guess. I never I didn't go to med school, but I have a feeling. Maybe that's a pressure point. I don't know. It's taken down low for a ball by Tim Wallach. Wallach drew a walk his first time up. Benison has walked two in the game, struck out one. And he's struggling again to find that first strike. Delano De Shields on at first base with good speed. Wallach not a speedy runner at the plate. The Shields, 40 stolen bases on the season. Swings through that one, 101. Well, he has stolen 20 out of the last 22 attempts. So he's had a chance to look at Dennis a couple of times. Comes into the day, third in stolen bases. Lance Johnson leads it. Eric Young, Colorado second, 42 41 respectively, and then the Shields at 40. Not a particularly big lead over there off Venice. 1-1. One, one. Runner not going. Down to third. Guy's got a chance for two on this one. Alisea the turn bounces it off the mark. They'll get only the force out. Gary Gaetti gave Louis Alisea a tough throw down at second. Kind of expected this to be a double play because it was sharply hit and Wallach doesn't run that well. But watch the throw from Gaetti to the second baseman. It's to the outfield side of the base. You see how he has to reach for it. And then he knows he's got to get something extra on the throw and he throws it short of the mark. See how far off that is? Second baseman wanted on the first base side of the bag. So their momentum takes them toward first. Good play at first base by Kara by uh, Mabry that time stepping off just to knock that ball down. Uh, there could have been an extra base picked up by Tim Wallach who reaches on the fielder's choice. So one away runner on at first Gagney who flied out to right field his first time up stands in. Tim Wallach not a threat to go at first base. He'll still be held over there by Mabry started to chase the slider away. And it's ball one each team now has four hits in the game. We're in the fourth inning. 1-1 one, one tie. Gaetti, the RBI single. Picked up for the Cardinals and the home run by Chad Curtis leading off the third for the Dodgers. Cardinals 4-4 four and four on this current homestand. They'll finish up the series against the Dodgers tomorrow. These two teams are going to meet again on the West Coast. 1-0 pitch and that's up high. Venice not a very bad follow through that time. 2-0. Yeah, he's not really pleased about his release play right now. He's all over the place trying to find a good delivery that'll give him some sense of consistency. And a 2 0 count. Outfield straight away on Gagnon. Confident pitches get it and fire. 
Venice is taking a long time. And he misses down low. And he's behind on the count. Three balls and no strikes. Right, Gary, so often you'll see starters stand out on the mound, look for a sign, not really sure what they want to throw. Then kind of wondering, well, where's this one going? So you're right. They take a lot of time when they have doubts about what the results are going to be. Thinking in this situation can hurt you. Oh, man. 3-0, will he take? Yes, indeed. Strike on the outside corner. They recognize Tommy Lasorda here tonight. The Cardinals did. Tommy's on hand. He's going to be joining us here in the fourth inning. to we'll find out what his future plans are and how he's feeling. He looks great. Three ball, one strike count on Greg Gagne. Tim Wallach off first base, short lead. Foul tipped off Pagnazzi, three and two. Gagne, the veteran, brought over to help shore up what had been a porous defense for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Taking over at shortstop. Another veteran ball player. Three to the count. And he walks it. So Bennis came back after falling behind, uh, but could not hang on. Now we've got runners on at first and second. That is the third walk. Given up in the ball game. Want to remind you, coming up, second half of our doubleheader, one of the outstanding rookie pitchers in the game, Jose Rosado, will be on the mound against Bob Walcott. As you will see, the Royals and the Mariners, the M's a seven-game losing streak was snapped last night. Randy Johnson throwing in relief. Dwayne Stats and Dave Campbell will bring you up to date on why the Mariners are struggling after they get everybody back. You'll see one of the game's great young players, Rodriguez. Mercy, what a season. All the fine young infielders, shortstops in particular, he may be the best. Well, the package, as we look at Alan Bennis's line here, 73 pitches through three and a third, and it's been a struggle for him. Three walks so far. Riders on at first and second. Valdez, the pitcher up, looking for the bunt. He's already dropped one sacrifice. That one misses outside for a ball. Now there's all kinds of things going on on the infield now. The Cardinals were coming hard at the corners. They had the middle infielders going all over the place. They were hoping to get one of the base runners to stray too far. Valdez is the 12th sacrifice of the season. Wallach doesn't run well at second. 1 0 pitch. It's bunted. Another good one. Gaetti in a hurry. Gets it over there to Alisea just in time. Boy, he can lay down the bunts. Ishmael Valdez gets it done again. Two sacrifices in the game, putting runners at second and third, but there are two down. Well, Valdez again, right off the end of the bat, kills it down the third baseline. Carlos is way in from first base. Gaetti comes hard and has to use that strong arm to get Valdez by a half a step. Well, let's see if the Dodgers can uh, find the big hit again. Here in the fourth, they've got two on two away. Lead off batter, Todd Hollinsworth, the rookie, has flied out twice in the game. Tim Wallach on at third base, the lead runner. Game tied at 1 1. Hollinsworth batting at 289 on the year. Takes the off speed pitch away. Well, we mentioned the rookie of the year votes. He'll probably uh, garner. If he could win it, it would be the fifth year in a row. The only time that has happened, the Dodgers twice have had four years where they've had the rookies of the year. Twice they've done that, including the last four years Nomo, Mondesi, Piazza, and Caros. That one tapped down to first foul. And Hollinsworth, as the season's gone along, the thing, Buck, about him is his consistency. Yeah, he has actually gotten better, and Joey Amalfitano was telling me he was really proud of Hollinsworth last night. He had an awful at bat. He was really upset about it, paced in the dugout, and then when he went out to play left field, he made a diving catch on an Ozzie Smith line drive. He was able to separate his hitting from his defense. Young players often don't do that. And he foul tips that one at the plate. So, Bennis... Gets ahead on the count. A ball and two strikes with two down and two on here in the fourth inning. 
Dodgers in a 1 1 ball game trying to take the lead for the first time here if they can get the base hit from their rookie left fielder. The other thing about Montano said about Collinsworth was the fact that he was an overachiever, a guy that was never satisfied with any game, any week, any month. He just wanted to continually improve. Just held up on that one. Thought about going after that inside heat. In a debut down at third. Two balls and two strikes. One of the real shames, talking about rookies and Rodriguez, he just misses. He played, he got just enough at bats, just enough games that he played in last year, so he's not a rookie. Here's the 2 2. Swung on, hit in the air, high to right center, but not deep. Willie McGee. And he's got it. Osworth retired. That'll do it for the Dodgers as they leave a couple more on in a 1 1 game. Welcome back, everybody. Bill Pito in the studio updating Houston to Montreal on top of the fourth. The Astros, Craig Biggio, with a two run shot down the line. It scores Shane Reynolds and Brian Hunter. So once down three zip, Houston's come back to tie it at three. Still in the top of the fourth. Gary, back to you. It's going to be a tough team, I think, uh, Buck. Uh, Houston's got some real good players on that club. Well, they're led by Bagwell and Biggio. They've got good pitching from Shane Reynolds and a rookie. We were talking about rookies, but they've had Billy Wagner come up and really give them a shot in the arm out of their bullpen. So they've got a pretty good ball club, and they're anxious to get back to the postseason. Well, this game has seen a lot of base runners on, a lot of pitches thrown, but... Not many runs scored. <laughs> and both teams have had opportunities. They've got a problem with the bases now as they're changing the bases. That's the reason for the delay. As well, Des takes extra warm up tosses waiting here for the ground screw to complete the changing of the bags. Telling you about these two great franchises. The Cardinals lead the Dodgers all time. 96 to 893. Can't get much more even yeah, than that. I don't know if you can even call that a lead, huh? <laughs> a couple of great teams with a rich tradition of baseball. And Gaetti will be leading it off. Gary Gaetti, Tom Pagnazzi, and Luis Alaseo will be coming up. Gaetti had the RBI single in the first inning, bringing home the run. That was Langford, who had doubled and was on. And Gaetti got the hit. Ball game tied, one apiece, each team with four hits. This breaking ball misses outside. We promised you that we'd bring you Dodger Blue. Well, we live up to our promises. <laughs> Tommy Lasorda, retired as manager here, 20 years worth, is in the ballpark tonight as he was recognized uh, tonight for the St. Louis Cardinals. Tommy, it's always great to see you. How you doing? I feel great, Gary. Good to see you. You look great. Feel great. You've been down? with the minor leaguers again. I went to see our Albuquerque club play. I saw them play uh, two games. One game got rained out. So then this next week I'll be out watching our double A club. I want to go see them play and then report back to Peter and Fred on what we have down there. Now did I hear a rumor that you were pitching BP again already? No. That's a, that's a rumor. <laughs> that's no, a rumor? Yeah, that is, uh, believe me, that, that. that is a rumor. No. Okay. Well, knowing know, you, I would expect you to be out there. You know how much no. you love to do that now? No, no. I see. I, I got a little bit of a different outlook now, believe me. Oh, you look great. Yeah, I feel great. I lost 20 pounds. And uh, when I went into the hospital, my cholesterol was 252. And now the doctor gave me a clean bill of health. And I, I'm down to 175. Tom Pagnazzi's got himself a base hit into center field. And a couple of different angles on that one by Pagnazzi off the mound by the shortstop. Gagney in the center after the strikeout victim, Gaetti. One down, Pagnazzi on, and LSA coming up. Long-term plans. Tommy, what are you going to be doing? Well, you know, when, uh, when I mentioned to Peter about, you know, not going back down to manage this year, he looked at me and he said, hey, I'll accept that because he knew how I felt. I really, you know, I thought about Don Drysdale. I thought about Don McMahon, McSherry. And I just said, hey, right now the doctor told me the first three months are very, very important. And I just, I want to keep that cholesterol down. I want to keep my weight down. I know if I go down on that field, I'm very excitable. And we lose a game, I get frustrated. I don't drink and I don't smoke. So consequently, what do you do? You pick up something to eat. 
I don't want to put the weight on. So he looked at me and he says, you're now vice president for the Dodgers. He said, you've got a lot of resources. You can do a lot of things for the ball club. And he says, uh, we're going to expect you to really help this ball club and the organization, which I was very, very happy to, that he did that for me because little did I ever realize that I would be the vice president of the Los Angeles Dodgers. 2-0 <laughs> -oh count. One down. Runner on at first base. Luis Salasea. Fouls that one back. You know, I was telling, I was telling Peter O'Malley the other day that in 1949, I reported to Vero Beach, Florida, the Dodgers uh, spring training camp. There were 780 ball players there that represented 26 farm teams. And there was all the instructors, all the managers, the owner, and everybody. I outlasted every one of those. <laughs> Driven to center field, backing up on this one near the warning track. It's going to be in. Alisea is on his way to second. Late break for Pagnazzi. Makes the turn. Pagnazzi. Relay throw from Gagne. Cut off. And the Cardinals have a 2-1 lead. I can't stand it up there, Gary. It's killing you, isn't it? <laughs> you know. You know better than anybody. I know exactly what you're feeling, Tommy. It's tough to sit up here and sit on your hands and not scream and holler at somebody, isn't it? And, yeah, and I walk away. I'm watching games on TV on the road, and I'm walking out of the room, and I was on the other day. <laughs> we're playing in Cincinnati. We have a seven to two lead, and uh, I'm on the, I'm on a treadmill, and I got a thing around me that tells me my heartbeat, you know. And they said when it gets up around the hundred, slow down. <laughs> well, they started. Base hit here. Base hit here. Now my 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 uh, thing was about eighty, and when they start getting that base hit, and that tying run came to the plate, I looked at the thing. It was ninety seven. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even there. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you can't believe how that heartbeat jumped up watching that tying run come to the plate. So what would have happened if I was there? I don't want to think about that. Alan Bennis grounds out to the Shields at second base, but he does get Eliseo over to third. Luis Eliseo had the RBI double. Tommy, I have to ask you this. Do you think you would ever want to manage again anywhere at any level? I probably would want to. And, you know, I miss it already. Believe me, I miss it tremendously. But I, I probably would want it to, to manage till the day I die. But I have a good job. I'm a vice president of the Dodgers right now. And the doctor told me the first three months are very, very important with people like that. And, I, hey, I'm going to take it easy. I just went in there, and I, ate, I had the guy fix me a salad with balsamic vinegar and lemon. And I'm going, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Man, I'm hungry. Wait I'm looking at those hot dogs <laughs> and I'm I'm drooling. I want a hot dog so bad I could I mean I would probably fight somebody right now for a hot dog. And here I am in eating this salad with lemon and vinegar in it. And there's no more trips to the hill here in St. Louis for some pasta. No, no, I could eat pasta. Now the doctor said I could eat pasta. And uh, I went my wife and I went to visit Dr. Hurd, who is one of the great great nutrition doctors in the country and he told me the do's and the don'ts and i was very very surprised at some of the things that he told me like for example fish he said don't eat trout don't eat salmon and don't eat catfish you can eat all the white fish really? fine yeah it's got a lot of oil in them exactly blood. exactly yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly but i we've been we've been educated on <laughs> you learn in a hurry, don't you? You're not kidding. Royce Clayton fouls that one back. One ball, two strike count, two down. Clayton has a runner on at third. And Luis Salasea, Cardinals have taken the 2-1 lead. Tommy, before we let you go here, in case this inning ends, I just want to say, I am sorry to see the best Italian restaurant in New York lost. That's your office. When you used to come <laughs> to New York to do games, had the best and largest selection of Italian food of any New York City restaurant. Well, you know, everybody says, what are you going to miss the most, Tommy? And I say, I'm going to miss the players, believe me. I love being around the players. You know, 20 years, I've had some of the greatest, greatest guys that ever played the game. Not only as baseball players, but as young men. And I have so many wonderful memories. Well, you know, at the helm, I've won 1,599 games. And they made it all possible for me to enjoy that that many times. And also the fact is that I'm going to miss the guys. I'm going to miss coming to the cities. I'm going to miss my friends. I'm going to miss all of that. But I had to give up something to get something. Tommy, we will miss you. 
but you'll be around the ballparks. We'll see you, and we'll be doing this more often. And Gary, don't forget, you always address me now as Mr. Vice Mr. President. Mr. <laughs> Vice President. No more Tommy, Mr. Vice President. Tommy Lasorda. Tommy, thanks for me. Thank you both. Thanks, right. Enjoy listening. All right. Thank you. You wonder why I used to love to go sit in the office when he came to New York as a manager and I was working there. So I'd get to the ballpark early just to get down and get in his office, eat his food, and listen to the story. <laughs> was the best thing going. Royce Clayton, a 2 2 count. And that'll be to short. And Carrows puts it away, and that'll do it. But the St. Louis Cardinals have added a run here. Alisea's RBI double bringing up Pagnazzi, and the Cardinals are up to the 2 2 1 lead over the Dodgers. With Tommy Lasorda gone, of course, Bill Russell, a player who's been there with him as a player and coach, is now on the bench. He's the skipper. And learned a lot in his days with Tommy. And, but there's nothing like taking over. Venice goes back to work here. Chad Curtis. Takes the pitch for strike in the outside corner. Curtis his 11th home run of the year is first in the National League. Came in the third inning. He's two for two in this ball game. First time, of course, that he has faced Alan Venice, the new center fielder for L.A. And chopped down to third base. Guy Eddie will pick that one up, and he's got it. We had a chance to ask Bill Russell about taking over as manager and how you never quite realize what it's like, no matter what else you've done before. You know, you never know how well prepared you are. Yes, I've played, I've managed in the minor leagues, uh, uh, been with Tommy throughout a lot of his decisions, watched other major league managers, but until you actually say the job is, is yours and say you run the team for that game, you don't know how well you, you are prepared. And, and surprisingly, uh, things have come easily for me. You know, the players have taken to me. Uh, they've reacted to, to my style, whatever that is. You know, you only can do what you dictate to do. but. Surprisingly, all the, the moves and, and uh, the things that I've seen and prior to managing and running it uh, have come along fairly easy. Well, you have a pretty good idea what you want to do, but until it's really your team and that mantle is taken away, he was replacing Tommy Lasorda until Lasorda announced his retirement, so he wasn't really sure how he was going to handle things. Towering fly ball to right. Mike Piazza hitting that one, and Brian Jordan putting it away, two down. I think one thing that Tommy Lasorda told Bill Russell that was very useful was he said, Bill, listen, you're not going to replace Leo DeRocher. You're not going to replace Walter Alston. You're not going to replace Tommy Lasorda. Just be Bill Russell, and that'll be sufficient. That'll be great, and you'll be a good manager. Pretty good advice. He has some inkling of what that's like, Buck. I mean, when he came into a player with the Dodgers, whose place did he take? Maury Wills. I mean, he had to replace one of the greats of the game and a, and a real Dodger blue. And the same kind of thing for Bill Russell when he moved into that job, which he handled so successfully. Eric Karros up, and he fouls the pitch back. Yeah. Karros 0 for 2 in the game. Well, that's Fred Clare, the general manager of the Dodgers, and he has seen a lot of changes with this ball club this particular season. With Tommy Lasorda and Brett Butler away from the ball club for the first time in several seasons. And Dodgers have had some transition to handle. And with Walter Alston and Tommy Lasorda, one year deals, year after year after year. Right field, Jordan coming. Long run for him. Gets there in time, puts it away. Eric Carroll says retired. A 1 2 3 inning for. Alan Bennis and the Cardinals protect the one run. Good ball game with the St. Louis Cardinals leading at 2-1 going to the bottom of the fifth inning. And a reminder that this year, the 50th anniversary of the Little League World Series will be celebrated. And on the deuce beginning on Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern time from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. You will see the anniversary games. U.S. qualifying gets underway on Monday. The Little League World Series on the deuce starting on Monday. Youngsters just like that. Who love this game and who play Little League Baseball and hope someday to be the ones being cheered for. <laughs> Everybody's dream. I remember thinking about playing in the Little League World Series. I remember the first major leaguer that played in the Little League World Series, Joey Jay. Came up with the Braves. Who did you pretend to be? Me? Yeah. Willie Mays. Willie Mays. Oh, yeah. I grew up in California. The Giants came to San Francisco and he was my hero. Still is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ted Williams, I know the feeling. <laughs> Although I wanted to be a pitcher, so 
while everyone will say who I used to actually go out back and bounce that ball off the wall thinking about Ike DeLong. <laughs> Down to first base. Oh, bobbled. And Willie McGee is on. Carros looked like an easy play for him. Just never came up with it. Well, he got ahead of the catch. He was thinking about the throw before he got the catch. He thought it was a routine ball slipped out of his glove. Right there, all ready to make the play and hit on the heel of his glove, gets away from him. No chance at all with Willie McGee running down the line. So McGee is on, and uh, that will be an error. His 12th error of the season. And we'll see whether or not the Cardinals can take advantage of that with Gant coming up 0 for 1 and a walk in the game. That number two spot for the Cardinals now has been on base all three times. As Ray Langford had a double and a single before he had to leave with a strained right groin. And now Willie McGee taking his place. Reaches on the air leading off this inning. Ishmael Valdez going to work here against Gant. Called out on strikes. One of four. And picked up in the uh, five that have been picked up in the ball game for the right-hander. Gant, Jordan, and Mabry in that order. They get that far here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Six, six hits now for the Cardinals. Side fake throw by Piazza. A pretty good lead down there by Willie McGee. McGee still has some good wheels. This veteran not afraid to take off when he feels he can go on a very smart base runner. He's stolen only three this year, the games he has been in, but he is a very smart and good base runner. 2 1 pitch. Swung on, hit in the air. Deep to left field. Way back. Ron Gantz got another. capital letters and inside fastball remember he had that pitch called strike on him earlier in the ball game and he was looking for something inside and hits it about four rows deep into the upper deck oh he crushed that fastball he had one on Thursday last Thursday gets another one here 23 on the season a 4 1 lead for the Cardinals still murmuring loudly over that one and why not what a shot Brian Jordan takes the pitch outside two balls and one strike Valdez that is just the second home run that he has given up in the last 52 innings the last home run hit off him was June 29 at Colorado. So he doesn't give up many. But he gave up that one. And the error costly. As the runner ahead of him, McGee, scores as well. Grounded up the middle and a base hit for Jordan, his second hit of the game. 4 1 Cardinals leading here elsewhere. Bill Pito. All right, Gary, Montreal and Houston in the fourth former Expo. Sean Barry says, take that. It's going to be a double to score Craig Biggio as the Astros score three in the fourth. They now lead four to three, playing in the fifth. Gary, back to you. Well, thanks. Astros have battled back in that one. And the Cardinals hitting the ball hard now. They have taken the 4-1 lead on eight hits in the ball game. That'll bring a visit to the mound by Dave Wallace. That fastball from Valdez was actually moving pretty well, but Gant was sitting all over it. It was probably off the plate inside a bit, but he had seen a similar pitch called the strike in his last at bat and had that pitch on his mind. Valdez has surrendered 14 home runs on the year, nine of those hit by right-handers. 
And the Cardinals jumping out here for the 4 1 lead. John Mabry is hit into a double play and struck out swinging. Runner on at first base is Brian Jordan. Nobody out. First three hitters here in the fifth inning have gotten on base. Jordan, a decent lead over there. Eric Karos trying to lay the tag down. Mendez coming in with a 3.34 ERA in this game. Runner goes, hit and run on, foul back by John Mabry. One and one. jump right there he has stolen 16 out of 19 this year looking back across the diamond at Tommy Reynolds for the next time neighbor has got some power if he gets a hold of one breaking ball fouled off outside of first Ryan Dave McKay and it's a one ball two strike count on it's important for the Cardinals to win a ball game in this series. The Dodgers have really played them well at Bush Stadium. Going back to last year, the Dodgers have won seven out of 11. There's Dan Dreyfus warming up down in the Dodger bullpen. But the Dodgers have been very comfortable here at Bush Stadium, and the Cardinals, with the prospects of maybe playing them in the postseason, need to play them tough here the next two games. Still a one ball, two strike count on Mabry. Well, Russell doesn't mind having that happening for his team on the road. Dodgers 32 and 31 away from Dodger Stadium. They were six over, both at home and on the road last year. One two delivery, breaking ball. He just chops that one foul. He was way out in front of the swing. Able to hold the bat back. Get the foul ball. Avery batting at 305 on the year. The Cardinals eight hits up on the board and a four-run lead and have their four-one lead. And their crowd buzzing here. And as usual, a good house on hand for the St. Louis Cardinals. Another off-speed pitch fouled off. Looks like he got a little gun shy with his fastball all of a sudden. After Gann hit that fastball into the upper deck, Valdez has thrown an awful lot of breaking balls. So they measured that at 442 feet. You don't get many balls hit into the upper deck here. No. During batting practice, Billy Ashley, the big outfielder for the Dodgers, was shooting for the upper deck, and it was Mondesi that hit a monster up there just above the eye. And he comes with a fastball here and gets it. Valdez getting the strikeout for the first out here in the fifth inning. <laughs> Let's take a look at Ronnie Gant's home run, number 23. All the way up to the upper deck, and there was no doubt about that one. One down. Larry Gaetti, a single and an RBI in the first inning. He's got the RBI. Alice has got one, and Gant's got two for the Cardinals in the game. On at first base and the step off here to get Jordan back to the bag. Chad Curtis, the home run for the Dodgers in the third inning, a solo shot accounting for their only run off Alan Venice. Cardinals have had the fewest left on base in the National League this year. That's one of the reasons we were noting earlier why they have been able to win ball games and pick up some runs, even though the offense at times has struggled. Get them home, get them on, get them in. step a little bit late getting back there you can see that he almost got tagged out but he got that right hand on the bag before Karras could swipe at him 
leaning a little bit. Not going. Driven in the alley to right center field. That's going to fall in. Curtis over to get it. Good jump. Jordan at third makes the turn. He'll stop at a stand up double for Gaetti, who's two for three. The Cardinals are wild to get going here tonight, but right now they're pounding on Ishmael Valdez. That's a high fastball. Gaetti takes it up the alley. Brian Jordan comes around second. Stops at third base as Gaetti checks in the second. 18 two baggers on the year for Guy Eddy. He is really making some kind of difference in this lineup. Infield will move in. Pagnazzi singled his last time up. He is one for two. Outfield straight away. Only one down. Pagnazzi will be walked here with Luis Alisea waiting on deck. Thinking on that Dodger bench, I'm sure, has just put the double play in order, but I might want to work the Pagnazzi, a right handed hitter. Remember, Valdez has six strikeouts. He's still got that good hook, and then you can deal with the switch hitter if you have an open base and walk him and work to the pitcher. But now they've challenged Dallas Bay. They have done that, no place to put him. Say a switch hitter, 294 right, 235 left. Has had three of his four home runs, though, from the left side of the plate. Alisay in this game, an RBI double that came in the fourth inning. Base is loaded, one away. In at the corners, double play depth at second and short. Breaking ball, strike in the inside corner. That's the pitch they struck Alisay out with in the second. An inside hook. Luis Alisea. Oh, one pitch to him, headed to the right field corner, and it'll be hauled in by Mondesi. Tagging up at third and scoring. The fifth Cardinal run is Brian Jordan, RBI for Alisea, and it's 5 1 Cardinal. Tony La Russa put Louis Alisea in the lineup tonight because he felt like he needed a little extra offense. Well, he hasn't been the big bopper, but he's driven in two. So La Russa had a premonition, and it's paid off. Alisea needed a start, and he's rewarded Tony La Russa with a couple of ribbies. 34 on the year now for Alisea. Moving over to third base was Gaetti. Staying at first, Pags. Dom Pagnozzi, and that will bring up Bennis. Alan Bennis try and help himself here. He has struck out and grounded out in his two at-bats of the game. 5-1 Cardinal lead. Three runs across here in the fifth. Valdez, the breaking ball, locked up Bennis, and it's one ball, one strike. Two of the runs this inning are unearned. This inning started with the error. It's allowed McGee to reach on the play at first by Karos when he couldn't handle the ground ball. One ball, two strike count. The breaking ball misses up high, two and two to Venice. Third, Pagnazzi on it first. And the 2 2, and Venice is gone. Seven strikeouts for Valdez, but the big blow, 442 foot drive by Ron Gant. Now Valdez is wondering what's happened here, as even though he struck out seven, three walks, one intentional, it's been the shots that have put him behind in this game. Well, before tonight, he had faced the Cardinals for 18 and two thirds innings and held them to just two earned runs. So tonight, a little bit unusual for him facing the St. Louis ball club, trying to encourage his offense to get him back in this ball game. Five-one lead for the Cardinals. We go to the sixth inning. Mondesi to Shields and Tim Wallach do up. Alan Bennis on the mound, looking for the uh, win 
after taking a loss in his first career start against the Cardinals. Against the Dodgers, rather, for the Cardinals. 1-0 count. And Mondesi chops that one to short. Running throw, Clayton Gutty. Mondesi's retired, one away in the sixth inning. Well, we mentioned that it was an important start for the Cardinals to have Alan Bennis turn it around. In 10 wins, he has really been tough, but he hasn't been able to stop the bleeding. When he doesn't have his great stuff, he doesn't know how to figure out a way to get out of it. He is talking to some of the more veteran pitchers on this team, including his brother Andy and Todd Stottlemyer. Andy right now is really on a hot streak after starting out one and seven for St. Louis. So remember, this is Alan Menace's first year as a starter. And Dave Duncan said, hey, you told me 10 wins. I'll take that. Looks like he's headed for his 11th. Getting some strikes to Shields retired on that ground ball out. That's hot. Last 16 starts, he's 11 and 1 with a 2.80 ERA. And it was frustrating for him because he signed here in St. Louis as a free agent, and I'm sure he wanted to justify the big contract and all of the hype. And probably struggled a bit with relaxing. Tim Wallach pops that one up to short, and Royce Plate will go back to get it and a good inning. Alan Venice has retired the side in order, and he did it on five pitches. Welcome back, everybody. Updating Ford and Colorado tied at one. Leading off the bottom of the eighth, Joe Orsalak way back and gone his second of the year. Marlins now lead 2-1. They're heading to the top of the ninth. Gary, back to you. Well, thanks very much. A Florida Marlins team that has admitted they are not going anywhere in the playoffs and have regrouped. They made a lot of player changes. Marlins bringing up a lot of youngsters. Talking about rookie of the year candidates, they got one. Renteria, their shortstop, is having a great season. Right now, he's got a 19-game hit streak. They thought it was ended, but then a scoring change. After the game, tapped down to third by Royce Clayton. Wallach makes the play, and Clayton is retired here in the bottom of the sixth inning. One away. Edgar Renteria has set a new rookie record for the Marlins hit streak. Chuck Carr had the old one at 14 games. He keeps his going with the official scorer going down after a game to look at the videotape of the play and deciding, hey, that's a hit. Was it in Florida? Oh, yes. Here's Willie McGee. <laughs> Willie coming in for Langford to pull the groin muscle. We're not sure when or exactly how, but after he'd gotten on base in the third inning with a single, and after he crashed into the wall trying to chase down what ended up being a home run by Curtis in the third, he left the game. And Willie McGee delivers a base hit to right. Gary, you know you're in pretty good shape when you've got a guy like Willie McGee on the bench. He came on to pinch hit, the pinch run now, and he has a base hit. He has scored a run. And Ron Gant, last time up, deposited one to folks who normally don't get a souvenir. Yeah, that's so high you don't even bring your glove. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> or a hat, even. <laughs> 23 home runs for him on the season. 64 runs batted in. He's been on base twice with a home run and a walk. Willie McGee been on twice single and an error he's on at first base now one down 10 hits now for the Cardinals now back into the screen the Card the Cardinals do do some scoreboard watching as we keep you updated Bill pito has been doing it they too taking a look at what Houston's doing today you know there's Darren Dreifert who has been up a couple of times now That one hit in the air to left field, but got jammed a little bit on that. Hollinsworth goes over and makes the play. Gantz retired, two down. Gantz is just so strong that even when you make a good pitch like that, 
he will muscle a ball that far. He did not get his arms out on that pitch. Well, Gary, the Cardinals know that they have been struggling, particularly here at home. They've won just eight of their last 19 at Bush Stadium, so they're anxious to get Ron Gant hot again, get Brian Jordan hot again. And now they'll have concerns about Ray Lankford, who had to be taken out of this ball game. And as Tony La Russa was telling us, we were talking about it before the game, but part of that is just when you get to this point in the season, you see some tough pitchers who are really bearing down for teams. They face Montreal fighting for a playoff spot here. They're against the Dodgers battling for a division championship. That's the way it's supposed to be. It just, it's not supposed to get easier, and it doesn't. Jordan batting at 303, and he gets jammed and fouls it back. Two singles and a walk in this game. Well, that's why Tony La Russa likes the mix on this ball club. He's got young star players like Langford and Jordan, and he's got some more experienced veterans like Gant, and then the real veterans like Gaetti, Smith, and Ozzy, and Willie McGee. Guys that have been through August and September in pennant races. We were talking on the way to the ballpark today, Buck, about something that's exemplified by some of these veterans like Ozzy. There is an attitude, I think, developing around some Major League Baseball players, and younger ones in particular. It's good enough to be here. A dangerous attitude for this game. Grounded down to third. That's a fair ball. Brian Jordan's got another hit into the corner. Hollinsworth going over to get it. On the fly, Willie McGee makes the turn on his way home. Gagney, the throw, is not in time. Six to one Cardinals. This ball goes all the way down to the corner and Todd Hollinsworth digs it out, gets it back to the shortstop, Gagney, the cutoff man. But McGee can still run and slides across ahead of the tag. He's looking down to the corner and now he gets the go ahead from Tommy Reynolds, the third base coach. And he slides across with the Cardinals sixth run of the ball game and they lead it by five. And another big night for Brian Jordan. John Mabry, the big cut. It's a 6-1 game, 11 hits. Off uh, Ishmael Valdez in this game. And the Cardinals up by five now. Jordan has had a walk, two singles, a double, an RBI, and a run scored in this game. And 81 RBIs for Brian Jordan now, tying his career high. Karos flips, and they will get the out. To end the inning. Mabry retired, but not before. Willie McGee shows you that a veteran who keeps himself in shape can still get around. Good set of wheels and a six cardinal run. ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball is brought to you by Glidden, the company that makes the world a colorful place. And by Office Depot, taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. Take a look at Willie McGee crossing the plate and Bush Stadium here in St. Louis. Gary Thorne, Buck Martinez, and a cast of characters. Welcome. Great to have you with us here tonight as the Cardinals have exploded. And Venice suddenly has a 6-1 lead as we go to the seventh inning. Gagne leading it off. Pitcher due up next. We'll see a pinch hitter. And that one foul back. Lane Kirby has come out on deck. For Venice, something to work with. Alan Venice. For his first win since the 19th of July. 0 2 count. Center field. McGee on his horse. It's a Willie kind of night, isn't it? Let's check in with Bill Willie Pito. Gary, that's what my mom called me. Houston leads St. Louis by a half game in the Central. The Astros and the Expos, top of the sixth. Former Expo Sean Barry does what he did in the fourth. A double to score Craig Biggio. So Houston now leads Montreal by the score of five to three. Gary back. <laughs> Your mom called and said, make sure you call him Willie. Wayne Kirby will be the pinch hitter. A 
Valdez is out of there completing his work and not exactly a successful night as the Cardinals picked up 11 hits off him over six innings. And in the six runs, he struck out seven, walked three, one intentionally. Four of the runs were earned. Kirby up against Bennis, and he fouls that one back. We were talking about desire and not being here as being enough. Willie McGee exemplifies the kind of player we're talking about. You've got to strive to win. I mean, that's why you play, and it, McGee appreciates that. He was part of the Cardinal Ball Club back in the 80s, along with Ozzie Smith when they won. And that's why you play the game. And I think, Gary, what we were talking about is there seems to be a complacency. Okay, you know, I had a decent year, and, you know, next year I'll have another decent year. Well, Ozzie Smith and Willie McGee played for championships in Pride. Never enough winning. That one rocked to right field in the yard, Jordan. Kirby retired, the pinch hitter, two down. Brian Jordan is really soaking up all of this attitude that McGee and Smith have. He wants to be better and get better all the time. He came out here tonight with something on his mind, and that was to get strikes, to hit strikes, and he has done that, and he's gotten three hits. Had a very big night at the plate for the Cardinals. Quickly, Bennis has got two down here. Hollinsworth 0 for 3. Bennis started out looking like he was going to struggle. He had a problem with the strike zone, trying to find it. First part of the game now is really settled in, helped out by the 6 1 lead. Turns Hollinsworth around, one ball, one strike. He threw 80 pitches in the first four innings of this game. He has thrown 22 in the last three. That'll get you deep into a ball game. One ball, one strike, two down. Hollinsworth batting at 288. Base is empty for him. And bounces that one. Two balls and one strike. He's up for real now. Bradford will be coming on in relief for the Dodgers. Bennis with a two ball, one strike count. Hollinsworth, the leadoff batter, takes that one outside, three and one to him. Six have been left on by the Dodgers in this game. Five of them in scoring position. But they haven't had anybody on since the fourth. Where it takes the strike and it's full three and two. <laughs> Ten in a row have been retired by Allen Bennis. Trying to make it 11 here. Three two pitch swung on, hit the center field. McGee right there. He's got it. Another one two three inning, the third one two three inning in a row for Allen Bennis in this game. Cardinals lead. Welcome back, everybody. The Reds and the Padres will pick it up in the top of the ninth inning. Jeff Brantley has got 31 saves on the year, but here, Ken Caminiti flies out. Steve Finley comes in to score, ties the game right now at one. If the Reds lose, it will be a bone save for Brantley. Gary, back to you. All right, Bill, thanks very much. And here the Cardinals have the 6-1 lead over the Los Angeles Dodgers. This pitching summary brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paint and Wallpaper Stores for Ishmael... Valdez, the night is over. Well, he struggled with his control early on, three walks, but then he settled into a groove, but it was Ronnie Gant that caught up to him and hit that monstrous home run to left field. Other side of the coin, Alan Bennis has been outstanding. Seven strong innings of four-hit ball. Aaron Dreifert is now on in relief, 24-year-old right-hander. Dreifert recalled on July 25th when Tom Candiotti was placed on a DL. His eighth or third innings of work. He jammed him on that one. It's right there at the mound. Somebody come and get it. Tim Wallach. And Gaetti is retired. Gary Gaetti is doubled and single in RBI. The first out here in the seventh inning. Bagdazi's picked up a single. 
The Cardinals at home looking for victory number 64 overall in the season. Remain within a half game of Houston if they continue on their winning ways in their ball game tonight. Reifert to Pagnozzi is a fastball strike in the inside corner. Pagnozzi intentionally walked his last time up. I will say it followed him with a sacrifice fly. Pagnozzi is single and scored. Came in in the fourth inning on a double by Luis Salaseo. One and one to it. Ben Dreyford started down in Albuquerque. They just wanted to give him some innings and give him a chance to build up his arm strength. He came up with the Dodgers in 84 and really threw the ball well, but then had problems, you know, when he had surgery. It's been a rehab situation for him ever since. But I like the idea of starting him. Give him innings. Give him an opportunity to experience all the various situations. Then you can make up your mind later. You know, Gary, that was a trend years ago. Take your good arms and let them start. Let them get a lot of innings. Rich Gossett started out as a starter for the White Sox in the Midwest League. Certainly I think it doesn't hurt the arms. I think what happens now is organizations are anxious to develop closers and when you have a closer working in the minors you might pitch 50 innings for the whole season and you don't give them a chance to develop any arm strength or go through tough times and experience how you get yourself out of them. Well taken. 2 2 and he's gone Out the outside corner. Rafford gets the strikeout. Well there's a guy right there that started as a starter and then became one of the best relievers in the history of the game Dennis Eckersley. Alongside of Danny Jackson down in that bullpen. Jackson may be able to get a start here. Tony LaRusso is saying before the game, if Stottlemyre, in fact, is bothered by the bad back, he would consider Jackson as one of three who might get a start. Grounded by LSA at a second base, Delano DeShields up with that one, makes the play, and that'll do it. A 1 2 3 inning, and it's seventh inning completed. Cardinals lead. Take a look at the line score as we go to the eighth inning. The Cardinals have the 6-1 lead. Time now for the Kelly Springfield tire key plays of the game. Big blast. Ron Gant, who has delivered in this ballgame his 23rd home run, came in the fifth inning with McGee on board. He put that into the upper deck for big two RBI homer. Brian Jordan delivering this RBI double in the sixth inning. Willie McGee was on base ahead of him. McGee charging around third. Gagney had the relay throw from the left fielder Hollinsworth. Not in time. And that has given Alan Venice a 6 1 lead to work with here in the eighth inning. Chad Curtis, who had his 11th home run in the third and a single in the first, is two for three in the ballgame. Showed bunt that time, but was just taking one ball, one strike as the Dodgers are looking for base runners. Piazzan Caros do up here in the eighth inning. Alan Bennis has gone the distance. Three walks a strikeout. He's used his D behind him. Gets the pop up here. Third base. Gaiety in foul territory. Took over the coach's box right there. And there's one away. Let's check in with Bill Pito. Bill. All right, Gary. The Dodgers, of course, chase, chasing the Padres. Pods, Reds top nine. Tied at one. Brian Johnson. High in the air. Thomas Howard makes the catch. Tony Gwynn, the go-ahead run, a developing situation at the plate, and he is out at the plate. 1-1 one, one to the bottom of the ninth, Gary. You're the Padres. I'm not sure you want to see Tony sliding into a catcher, huh? No, not after his Achilles heel problem. He probably winced when he crashed into that shin guard. Padres are, have really put on a show here. They've won six of their last ten. They've moved into that first-place position behind the Dodgers, who are one game out. Dodgers four game win streak is on the line here though. There are going to be some real good races for baseball. Wild card races. The National League Central here with Houston, St. Louis, Chicago fouled off. How about the Yankees all of a sudden with John Wetland having some growing problems and he is not going to be available for a while. The Orioles have started to play better. Seven and a half back. Orioles may end up looking back on the middle of this season and really crying. Piazza, a single in three at-bats, lifts that one to the gap in right center. McGee coming in will play it on a hop. 
And Piazza's got his 101st single of the season. And he's got a two for four ball game. He's on at first base. The fifth hit off Alan Bennis. In the West, you see San Diego leading the Dodgers by one. And Colorado's back three. The Giants have dropped out 13 behind. So you get three teams there in that National League West. Those teams will be playing one another going down the stretch. Then the Padres, of course, have added to their offensive punch with Greg Vaughn coming over at the trade deadline. And that is a huge acquisition, huh? Eric Karros is up. Hard to believe he's the first guy to drive in 100 runs between two leagues that's been traded. And wasn't he the first with 35 or home runs in the season or something like that? Between that, two teams, yeah, yeah, two leagues and two different teams. Garros with a 1-0 pitch, hit hard to short. Taylor made two. Alisea from Clayton, long time to get it back. Garros hits into the double play. The Dodgers retired despite a single. Venice faces only three protecting that lead. The slingshot artists seen around sporting arenas, firing the T-shirts into the crowd. Cardinals have the six. One lead in this one, and we remind you, the NFL preseason game, Oakland and Atlanta. Coming up on Thursday on ESPN, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, wide receiver Tim Brown of the Raiders. Quarterback Jeff Hostetler will be looking for him. Cornelius Bennett added to the Falcons' defense. They don't have Brian Jordan, however, but even without him, you'll see him at 8 o'clock Eastern coming up tomorrow, NFL preseason. And are the Cardinals glad Brian Jordan's not there <laughs> and is here? I think he's glad, too. Batting practice was a lot easier than uh, pre-game practice. Than running the gauntlet. <laughs> Venice is going to get a shot at the complete game as he takes his turn at bat here. 0 for 3 in the ball game. But you know when you're 0 for 3 and you're a pitcher in the National League, you're having a great night. You're still in there. Fast ball. Aaron Dreifert on in relief of Valdez. Dennis, as we said, has two complete games this year. He'll get a chance at his third in the ninth. Took the glove right off Piazza's hand. That's pretty good stuff. Dreyfurt really looks free and easy out there throwing. And this ball is down and away, and Piazza kind of slaps at it. Glove falls right off his hand. 2-1 pitch, big fastball swung on and missed, 2-2 two two to Venice. Not really sure what they have in mind for Darren Driver and whether or not they want him to work out of the pen or eventually think about him as a starter. Broken back ground ball to short. Agney comes over. And Venice is retired, and he'll go right where he wants to go, back to the bench to await the ninth inning. Chad Park has gone back into the bullpen for the Los Angeles Dodgers with Tom Candiotti coming back off the DL and pitching effectively in last night's game. So that will certainly bolster the pen of the Dodgers to have Park back there after he had worked both ways this season for L.A. Tom Candiotti was all smiles today, and why not? Yeah, he said he loves to pitch in this ballpark in the humid air in St. Louis because that knuckleball will dance around for him. Hot weather, humid air, moving knuckle. Royce Clayton to his fellow shortstop. Dagney up to throw, and the stretch made by Karros. And Clayton's retired. He's had an 0 for 5 game. Royce Clayton, two down. There's Candiotti who got a chance to go down and rehab. He was hit on the arm by a line drive put on the DL. When he went down to rehab, he got to work with Charlie Huff, who's a minor league pitching coach and a couple of knuckleballers. He said they played catch every day, and it was a great refresher course. Took him an hour, and they threw it back and forth twice. Willie McGee. <laughs> Two knuckleball guys playing catch. That had to be something, huh? <laughs> <laughs> McGee is single and has reached on an error. So far, the number two holes been on base the whole game. All four plate appearances, two for Langford, two for McGee. Willie batting at 292. I asked Willie, I said, you know, the rumors are they're going to offer you another contract. 
With a smile and said, well, they haven't talked to me yet. <laughs> <laughs> having a year one two check swing Did not go around on that two balls two strikes on McGee who would you rather have around than Willie McGee to work with guys like Gant Langford George just to have him around and here he's filled in tonight in center field and scored a run and gotten the hit the short again busy inning Gagney and three ground balls to short Alan Venice will come back out and try and wrap this game up. ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball is brought to you by the Athlete's Foot. Nobody knows the Athlete's Foot like the Athlete's Foot. And by Black Magic. Use Black Magic paint protectant. And the only thing that will stick to your car is the shine. Raul Mondesi leads the inning off by popping out to Luis Alasea. One down, ninth inning. Alan Venice going after his third complete game of the year. L.A. has had one base runner over the last five innings. And that one base runner was taken out in the eighth inning on a double play hit into by Caros after Piazza had singled. Boy, what an encouraging start by Alan Venice here tonight. After he got the lead, he really zeroed in on the strike zone and just put the pressure on the Dodger hitters, and they haven't been able to respond. His last complete game came on June 3 at San Diego as he shut out the Padres on a six hitter. His other complete game on April 10 against Montreal where he gave up a run on four hits. And now he looks for the complete game win. Grounded towards second again. Alisea is only one out away. Two down. Well, Alan Bennis now will have 11 wins. Andy Bennis has double figures in wins and that's the first time brothers have done that since 1985 when Phil and Joe Necro both pitched for the Yankees. So the Venice brothers have put together a real solid season for the St. Louis Cardinals. Tim Wallach two down ninth inning. Cardinals leading at 6-1. Breaking ball misses outside by Venice. He has walked four, has struck out only one in this game. Been very effective. Just getting the ball hit at somebody and not particularly hard. One ball, two strikes on Wallach. Last win, July 19. Two losses, two no decisions in his last four starts. Chased by Mabry. May have room and not quite. We'll be taking you back for updates on other games with Bill Pito. Don't forget, second half of our doubleheader will be coming along. Update on what's going on in Seattle. 6 1. Cardinals on top in this one. Ismael Valdez will be taking a loss going 11 and 7. Breaking ball just missed inside on Wallach. Two balls and two strikes. Chad Cotter, Curtis got his first National League home run in this game. Picking it up in the third inning for the Dodgers. That one to right field is playable. Ryan Jordan going back to get it. And the Cardinals have beaten the Dodgers 6 to 1. Venice put the wraps on this ball game and they beat the Dodgers for just the second time in five games here at Bush Stadium this year. We got some good offensive support from Brian Jordan, Ron Gant, and Louis Alisea. He retired 16 of the last 17 batters to get this victory. Once again, our final score 6 1. Cardinals do it for Buck Martinez and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Lots of other baseball action going on today. Second half of our doubleheader all coming up. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Again, final 6-1. Cardinals win it.